I say boom, boom, boom. Well, let me see you say way -o. Way -o. Hey, everyone. Welcome to My Name Channel Live. I'm Beth Hoyt, your host. How is everyone? Wait, okay, I'm sorry. Wait, don't, don't all talk at once. Oh my God, okay, okay, I got it, you're good. Okay, great, you're good. Oh, oh, I just heard someone say just okay. That's a bummer, but hopefully I'll fix that. Now, a, a bunch of you just said good because that's just your habit. <laughs> just kidding, I couldn't hear any of you guys. <laughs> well, you can't hear me, so hear this. If you're watching On Demand, click this annotation right up here and watch the show as a playlist. Just trust me, I trust you. I'm really glad you're here today because because we've got this freaking awesome show. We don't just do it just for us. I mean, like most, mostly, but not just. Today on the show, we've got my interview with Adam Carolla. We taped it yesterday. Why did you tape it yesterday? Because that's how we do. Also, Adam is a very busy man these days, and we were thrilled to get a few minutes with him whenever we had time. He had the time. So you're going to love that, but also Eugene Merman's here, and he will be live in the studio in a bit, because that's how we also do. We'll answer your questions, so tweet him and comment him now. Uh, okay. Father's Day is coming up. It's this Sunday. You're welcome for reminding you. Now go out and buy your dad that tie or those golf balls or like the tie with the golf balls on it. Whatever you get for your dad. At least your dad isn't the dad you're about to see because he might be the worst dad ever. It's a brand spanking new Madam Channel original video from the leaves Steve Renazizi. It's that he knows best with shit. Oh, no, no, no. Steve, what are you doing? I can't tonight, babe. I really, really can't. My stomach is killing me. You do this every time that my boss invites us over for dinner. I'm not just saying it this time, okay? I am in excruciating pain. Oh, I'm having another contraction! Oh, God! Oh, it's a warning shot. You good? You done? Yeah. Oh, great. Get dressed. Oh, damn it! <laughs> so I say... Get your damn hands off my stapler. <laughs> <laughs> oh um, my God. Um, can I use your restroom, please? Sure, it's, it's, it's down the hall to the right. Thank you. Oh, oh man. God. I mean, every time. That's funny. I mean, it, it was my stapler. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, I'm going to tell that one. Oh, oh God. Oh, oh. oh, oh no. Oh my, oh my, this is atrocious, oh, 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 be gone. doing back there, buddy? Oh, just looking through your stuff. <laughs> you feeling okay? Never better. Never better. This is going to be good. Look who's got their appetite back. Do I detect mocha in this brownie? Yes, there is. You have a very sophisticated palate, sir. That's right. That's right. <laughs> what's, uh, what's he got in his mouth? Oh, ooh, what is what that? Wait a minute. Is this? Mm. This better not be what I... Oh, my oh. God. <clears throat> oh. Do you do you add mocha to the just the batter, or do you is it like a prepackaged? Steve, you know anything uh, about this here? No, I no I don't. I just I assumed it was just a strange dog toy. Crazy, because it says Steve on the label. That's uh that's an unfortunate. Coinky dink. You know what? Stop bullshitting and just tell us that these are your shit filled underwears. They're just not my us. underwear, Bob. I don't know what to tell you. I I'm wearing the underwear that I came in here with tonight. I call bullshit. Show us your underwear right now. Take them out. Let's see them. Bob, this is not an inquisition. I won't be subjected to this. This is crazy talk. Take your goddamn pants off. Just take them off already. Just show them. Okay. okay. All right. This Honey, is what you wanted, yeah, Bob. Or... Huh? This is what you wanted. So yeah. you remember. And there you oh go. Oh my god. <laughs> Those are mine. I Those can't. are my underwear. Ah! Poop! Why did they have to show us the poop? I mean, I know it was it was fake poop. 
But still, fake poop is worse than real pee, wouldn't you say? Okay, let's move on. Yesterday, I had the pleasure of interviewing one of the funniest guys on the planet, Adam Carolla, stopped by, and we had some fun in an entirely poop-free conversation. Check it out. We are so excited to have with us today one of the great thinkers and great talkers in America today. You may know him from the Man Show, Love Line, from his enormously popular podcast. He's here with us today with a new book. It's a memoir of his life called Not Taco Bell Material. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Adam Carolla. Yeah, it's me. Thanks, man. Yes, thank you so much for being here. All right, um, we're going to get into some questions I have for you. First of all, sure. I've been powering through this book, which is its so entertaining, so funny. Oh, thanks. You're very welcome. Um, one of my favorite things are these tangents you have, which are actually um, tangents. Tangents. Yeah, <laughs> that's why I get the big bucks. Yeah, I thought, it's so funny. Well, um, I had a lot of tangents in the book, and then I thought at a certain point, maybe we should have a little designation to let people know I'm going on a tangent. Right. And then I thought... Tan gent. I don't even know if it's spelled the same way, but it'd be funny if we had a little little icon of a tan gentleman. It is funny. But I think this way too, I think tangentially. And speaking of, um, I'm just mm -hmm. kidding. That's good. <laughs> Thanks. That was yeah. just pow. Yes, thank real you for, time. The, for the backup mm -hmm. props on that. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm wondering how many tangents had to get cut. Basically, the editing process in general. How long was this book? I feel like you might have another book in the backup that's like. With everything uh, was there was like a bunch of no. Nah, we didn't cut a lot, um, as I recall. I, I they always cut a fair bit, but uh, for some reason this book was all stories of my life, and my last book was a lot of jokes, and I was dealing with an editor who may not have gotten every one of my jokes. So there was a lot of like, eh, this one's not that funny, so why don't we get rid of this one? But this is more stories. Um, for my life. So other than there was a chapter about how I just don't believe the Holocaust ever existed. And she said, maybe we should cut that one. Save that one. And she said, don't talk about it. <laughs> oh, anyway, we can edit that out. But other than yeah. my denial of the Holocaust chapter, they're Absolutely. all in there. No Everything's denial. in there. So you've had tons of odd jobs doing all kinds of crazy things. What's, and in here you describe your worst job ever. But do you want to maybe as, as a little teaser, because it's so awful, describe <laughs> for us that, that worst job? Um, I, you know, I had a series of horrible jobs yeah. and or professions, but it wasn't like, oh, I was, you know, in between, you know, semesters at college, like summer semester or whatever, like I had a bad job. That was my life, you know, bad jobs. Right. Like it wasn't like, some people have that, oh, I, and I hate these pussies, by the way, that's the P word, mm. you know, where they go like. Alerted. In between semesters, like I worked a whole summer on my uncle's farm before I had to go back to Stanford and finish up my law degree. And it's like, all right, that's fine, but it's temporary. The jobs I had were a yeah. life sentence. Yeah, your life. You know, mm -hmm. just yeah, digging ditches, swinging hammers, like working on construction sites, just like dirty, no yeah. pay. Cleaning carpets, I think, was my worst gig. Yeah. McDonald's sucked, too. Right. Well, One last question is, what is it like now that you finally... Um, you know, you, you're doing your own thing. How awesome is it to not feel after working all these jobs and working for the man for so long? How does it feel to be in charge of your destiny and your career right now? It feels like it doesn't suck. Great. Well, let's get to, we're gonna take a quick break. When we get back, Adam is gonna be responding to your questions on Twitter. Mm -hmm. But first is one of our favorite product displacements from Captain Hippo. This is Church. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Prepare to be forgiven at church. Slap on your Sunday best and kneel before our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now stand, now sit, now rise, now sit, now kneel in one of our many views. Christ has died, Christ is risen. Won't you come again? And remember, church is always free. Swing by early and confess your sins. Stick around afterwards for the Our Mother the Redeemer Catechism Bake Sale. Bake Sale. This Sunday, a special yeah. glorious performance by Pastor Chris. Chris. He has the fingers of angels. Don't miss it. Don't sloth around till Christmas or Easter. This is an event you can't miss. Because if you do, you go to hell. Unless you confess your sins, then you're fine. Light a candle, say a prayer, receive his body. 
taste is born. All are welcome in the house of the Lord, except if you're gay. Ew. Afterwards, go right across the street to the diner for buttermilk pancakes. So go to church. Happening every Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Amen. All right, hey guys, we're back with Adam Carolla, and we're gonna get to, into your Twitter questions that you guys have sent in. Are you ready, Adam? Yes. Okay, all right, let's get to your Twitter questions. We have a tweet from um, Chitanic. For Ace, uh, does Ace, man's buddy Ray, still prank as hard as the stories from when they were teenagers? He seems like a man boy. Um, yeah, he still has a good sense of humor, and he still likes to fuck around, but um, when he used to work for Jimmy Kimmel's show, he used to play a game called the breathing game where he'd put his hand over your mouth and sort of try to suffocate uh, people. And somebody told him, you can't do that. It's a <laughs> Disney-owned company. And so he was let go. Uh, he also wrestled with a guy. There's a quadriplegic guy, or actually a, a wrestler that had all his limbs, like, removed. But he had sort of the stubs, and he claimed nobody could hold his arms and hold them apart. Ray immediately took the challenge, and the next thing you know, Ray and a guy in a wheelchair were like going at it in the hallways over Kimmel's, and that was probably about five years ago. So he's, he's still got the he eye of the tiger. That, that wrestling match. You know, I think we're all winners when you can see okay. one of your buddies from high school wrestling with a quadruple oh, sure, in a yeah. wheelchair. Yeah. yeah, you're like, we've, we've, we've got we're all, there. We've all won. Yep, mm -hmm. that's a happy story. Next mm -hmm. tweet is from 1780s guy. Uh, details on the plan for show with Dr. Drew. Hopefully he'll be doing a regular appearance on my podcast. Cool. Uh, people like Drew and they like me, but they, they like us they like together. You together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. A tweet now from Josh Dozy. Mm -hmm. What is his favorite type of penguin and why? I like the emperor. Yeah. And that's my goddamn business. Yeah, next so, tweet, and move, move on. This is from Wig Yet. Ask Adam who is the most annoying fellow celebrity apprentice. Uh, well, Aubrey O'Day was super annoying. Trump would be like, Aubrey, if you were me, who would you fire? And she'd be like, Mr. Trump, I wouldn't fire myself because I'm dedicated, I'm hardworking, I'm a strong woman. Yes, but who would you fire? I'll tell you who I wouldn't fire, Mr. Trump. I would not fire Aubrey O'Day because Aubrey O'Day is dedicated, focused, gives a hundred. Aubrey, who would you fire? <laughs> I can't tell you who I would fire. I can tell you who I wouldn't fire. Aubrey O'Day, because I'm a strong woman who speaks for women. And it's like, oh, bitch, shut the going. fuck <laughs> up. She wouldn't fire herself. We get it. Yeah, right. So mm -hmm. that's all the time we have. Adam, thank you so much for being here. This yeah, book. It's been awesome. It's been awesome. This book is out now, available everywhere. And if you're in New York, Adam's doing live podcast tapings all week long. Yeah, Thursday, at at Caroline's. Friday, Saturday. Yeah. Check mm -hmm. out the website for details. This is out today. Thank you so much, Adam, for being here. My pleasure. Awesome. Adam was nice enough to sign a copy of his new book, and we are giving it away on our Twitter feed. So go to twitter.com slash my channel to find out more. And check this out. We're going to be putting up on our website the extended Corolla interview because there was too much awesome for this show. So look for that on mydamchannel.com tomorrow, or just subscribe, and we'll let you know about it. Just subscribe. Just, just like, just click. Just Click this button right here. Okay. Eugene Merman is getting warmed up in the green room, so send in tweets and comments for him. He will answer them. He wants to, or he will after we warm him up. I'm going to prepare something special to warm him up with. So let me just get set up here. Meanwhile, here's a little video from Matt McManus, who was hanging out with me in the studio yesterday. It's Matt Mc it's McMahon with Situation Escalate. What's up? It's Situation Escalate. I'm Steven Seidel. This is where Matt takes it to a whole nother level. Who's ready for some public intimacy?
Hi, I'm Hannah Hart, and you're watching My Damn Channel. All right, Eugene Merman's going to be in the show in just a couple of minutes, and I really, I want to get him like loosey-goosey, so I thought I'd make him a cocktail. Now, Eugene lives in Brooklyn, and I live in Brooklyn, so I decided to create an authentic Brooklyn cocktail, call it the Eugene. Okay, now I'd love for you to make this with me at home, but if you can't, because the ingredients are very local, then just feel free to take notes, okay? So first, we have this container. It's already filled with vodka. Um, we're just gonna, uh, we're just gonna dump the rest of that in there. Just really get it in there. Just pour, you know, as much as you need for yourself, and then just throw. Just to make sure that, um, you know, you're loosey-goosey as well. Do some of that. Okay, now we're gonna start off with really fresh ingredients. We've got some ginger here. We're just gonna put that in there. You know, just a little bit is good, because a little bit goes a long way with ginger. That's a good tip. Um, it really just clears out your sinuses too, which is always good. And some lemon, just some lemon zest. Mm, and the color makes it really pop. Just some fresh lemon, just really zesting that in there. It smells so fresh. Brooklyn has some really great cocktail bars and they really use fresh, straight ingredients from the garden. It's really inspiring. So I have some Brooklyn ground coffee. This is from Brooklyn. These coffee beans, we're just gonna flavor, just put a few in there just for essence kind of, you know? And then we're gonna get really Brooklyn-y because I've got a, a hot dog from Coney Island, you know, complete. So we're just gonna just put that right in there, okay? And um, I've got a brownstone here. There are such beautiful brownstone houses in my apartment in my neighborhood of Park Slope. So we're just gonna take the brownstone and just dump that. Just start mixing it up now. Really wanna just get that. It's just it's smelling really Brooklyn-y. Um, here we get some authenticness with. Um, oh, I see. I'm back. It's uh, the corner of a hipster's shirt. I just, I, I just ripped it off his shirt as he was biking past. So we get a little bit of, you know, neighborhoody Williamsburg in there. I also nabbed a few of his, um, his ironic beard trimmings. Just a dab of this, just a little dash. Just get that in there. You want to be careful not to choke on that later. Now this is really where, this is special. This is when it gets really broken -y. Um, This is a, a jar filled with Brooklyn air, okay? I just opened my window on the cab home last night and I captured it. Now this is tricky because you want to not spill any, so just make sure you get it right over the, the container. Just let that all go in there, okay? And then stir that up. Make sure you get all of it in there. Every, I'm just gonna get the last bits of that in there. Okay, got that. Now this is a pretty Brooklyn-y cocktail, right? But I just wanted to give it that special ingredient that really made it the Eugene. And as all of Eugene's fans know, he was born in the Soviet Union. He's super smart. So I thought I'd make, you know, I thought a good Russian intellectual influence would really make this drink sing. So I'm gonna infuse this vodka with Dostoevsky, okay? It's crime and punishment. So that the cocktail has that smoky, and again, you know, with the ginger, but also just that hint of danger from the crime and guilt, guilt from the, from the punishment. Okay, so just get that in there. It's gonna be buoyant, you know, so you're gonna wanna, it's tough to get that, it just, it wants to float. A little, you know, get that in there. I feel like a mixologist. How am I looking, guys? Got any more of this in there? All right, so we're gonna let this infuse a little bit longer. Eugene's gonna love this. Okay, he'll be here in just a second. But first, I've got a My Damn Channel premiere for you. If you've made your Eugene with me, then just sip away while enjoying a brand new video. It's Junior University with their latest. It's called, It's the NBA Finals. She'll understand. Mm. So glad you guys were able to make it out. Where's Dave? Oh, he had to work late. Oh, that's too bad. No, oh, it's really okay. He really wanted to be here, so he's gonna Skype in so he doesn't miss anything. Hey guys! Hey Dave. Are you at home right now? Yeah, I got off early, just in time to catch the fourth quarter. Isn't that crazy? Record the game and get over here. Honey, home. it's the playoffs. I can't record it. How can I post clever status updates and funny hashtags if it's not live? Dave, do you think you can turn the camera towards the television? No problem, dude. No, uh, -uh don't you dare. Can I get you guys started with some beverages? Get the fuck out of here! Excuse me? Yeah. Sorry, that's my inconsiderate boyfriend. Honey, the refs are killing us right now. Excuse me, sir, could you tell me the score? 97-95. Holy shit! I'm sorry, it's the playoffs. I think we'll just have water for now. Yeah. 
Hey, oh, watch oh, it! Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'll get a towel. You guys only live a couple of blocks away, right? Don't even think about it. Dave, turn the game off. Guys, can you just shh for a second? Get your feet off of that coffee table right now. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. What happened? Oh, shit. Did we win? Yeah, baby! That's a puzzle! I should. Dave! Oh, I can't believe I'm talking to a webcam right now. All right. Dave! So Dave! Give you guys something to celebrate here, huh? All yeah. right, cheers! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Son of a bitch! Hey, honey, bring me some chicken parm. Work, Liz. Good morning. Oh, I'm running so late oh, today. Hey, Jen. Oh, it looks so good in here. Can I help you do anything? What? Um, you have something. Something? On your lip. Oh, oh, this? It's nothing. I I don't have anything. I just I get them when I'm stressed out. Is it, is it really that noticeable? Well, no, it's just... I'm going to put um, a little bit of powder on it. Better? Uh, I stopped and got the brand new pumpkin spice latte. It's so good. Oh. Have you had it? Try it. No. Yeah. No, no, try it. No, I'm Come fine. On, so try it. No, Jesus, back it up. God. Look at all the snacks you brought. Uh, Whoa. Ryan's paperweight has been glued to his desk. <laughs> oh, you're the best gags. Chips and dip? Who made this? I did. So, oh. yeah. so good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're a double dipper too, huh? Secret safe with me, I am too. <laughs> I hear drink. Oh, no, that's tense. Oh, it's good, right? I'm gonna puke. Here's the birthday cake, huh? Shh. It's a surprise. Don't forget. Oh, that is good. Have some. Have some. It's delicious. So hey, good. Hey, everybody, I brought Samson. Oh. Samson. 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 Hey. Hey. Look at what a big hey. boy. You're such a oh, good boy. Mr. Get, 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 get the kid. Get the kid. He's just a kid. Hey. I can't see that. What? Oh, no. Oh, oh God. No, no, somebody! Who's the CPR administrator in the office? Oh, oh, it's me! It's me! Oh, no, 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 Hey you guys, it's Eugene Merman. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. So you guys know him from the Comedians of Comedy Tour, HBO's Flight of the Concords, Adult Swim's Delocated, and most recently, and excitingly, his voice from Bob's Burgers. Yes. Yay. Have you ever answered um, tweets and people's YouTube questions in a live comedy show before? No. I thought maybe you didn't and or hadn't and that you'd be a little nervous, so that's why, you know, yeah, yeah. just imbibe all you want. Yeah. Oh, it's one thing to talk to someone in person, but it's very nerve-wracking to answer tweets. Yeah. Exactly, it's live. I yeah, mean, they it's a they, live tweet as opposed to getting like 30 seconds to be to like, like, yes, to formulate I will be. It? Exactly, yeah, really... so yeah, get up in there. Yep. Um, okay, so I, let's talk about Bob's Burgers first, which is coming up in its third season. With, with It has awesome guest stars this yeah. season. Nick yeah, yeah, Offerman yeah, and Zach Galanafagos. Galanafagos? Yes, you like that? Zach did like it. Uh, Aziz. Um, Kevin Klein's a regular, Bill Hader's on it. Yeah, it's great. It's been good. So you play a young boy named Gene. I do, Gene. A, young, a young boy named Gene. Do you think that, is, as, as being an adult man, is that like, are you tapping into your inner child? Or do you, like I do, I still think I'm an adult woman, but I think of myself as a kid often. Yeah, you, I like, just think of myself as a, as, a, as a child that's allowed to drink and no one thinks it's weird. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know if I, I mean, when you do it, it's like, you you uh, anyway, that's a good answer. Is that is the best like, is answer? Is it like your inner child, or is it like, do you think of yourself sometimes as a child? I, I think there's two separate things. I think of myself as a child, and then I'm acting and pretending to be a child in a cartoon. That's why I was having trouble answering, because it was right. like two things. No, I don't like access like a childlikeness <laughs> of myself. I it, like go into a child zone. I think yeah. we're all acting. Yeah, that's probably just, best. Just like when someone plays, say, like a sexual offender on Law and Order, they don't go like, well, this is what I've always wanted to do. <laughs> 
And I'll access that part That's of me that hope. secretly wants to brutalize strangers. But so many of those Law and Order actors, you know, they do, they don't go on to do other things. So you never know. If... Oh, I meant like when, like when Robin Williams is a guest star. He totally went on to do Saving Private Note, too. <laughs> right. A lot of stuff. It's true. He did go on to do. He had, he's doing all right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's get into your Twitter questions. First up is a tweet, and it is from that guy Bab. Okay. Ask him to run for president the same way he ran for student body president. Then ask him about the latter. Well, as an immigrant, I can never run for president of the United States. Um, but I, I can run that. for president of my class as a kid in high school. And did you? I did. I was very unpopular, and I thought it would be funny. And I was right. It was very funny. And I came very close to winning. I was like 20 votes away from having to organize stuff now. So it's great that I lost. But I learned an important lesson about trying and doing crazy things and having it be fun. Did, did you almost get get close to winning because you underestimated your popularity or because no, of a funny no. campaign? No, no. Because I changed. No, I was not. Un I was so unpopular, but it flipped. It oh, went. Okay. I was infamous. Like, uh, and s no, my a friend of mine came up with a slogan for me that was, "It's not just a change; it's a mutation." <laughs> and so we put posters all over school that said that, and like other sort of weird, ridiculous things. And I wrote—I recently found out like a speech that's crazy, like that you would write what you promise. And I think I just promised to play like slightly better music, like I promised to play like, the Jesus and Mary chain at dances or something. That's uh, cool. So yeah, that sounds like you are and your Kickstarter campaigns for. Eugene Merman Comedy Festival, all yeah. the different things you promised people. Those things we did, because that's like you become bound to do those. Yeah, we yeah. promised an awkward party bus and we had one. And you delivered. We delivered. We promised to put people's names in the program and say that they're racist, and we did that. <laughs> Good. You gotta stick to it when there's money involved. Mm -hmm. uh, next tweet is from Urfincy. Yep. If you had to choose one of Bob's kids as your own, who would it be and why? Well, um, I would say. Possibly Gene, because right. he's so fun and <laughs> adorable and, and a common. goofball. You seem very similar to being your son. It'd be a very natural feeling, I'm sure. Yeah, and then also Louise, because it'd be like, who doesn't want a child that's like a bit of an evil genius? And, you know, a kind hearted evil. So a little bit of a malicious genius. Yeah. All right, so we're going to come right back to answer some more of your questions. I'm going to fill up Eugene's drink a little bit. And here's a video from a fellow New York comic, John Friedman. It's mm. the John Friedman Internet Program. It's the John Friedman Internet Program on your worldwide bed. No, 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 that's not for you. I mean, I guess if you want. It's the John Friedman Internet Program on your worldwide bed. Oh, hi, we're back. We're back. And I have a question for Eugene. For, I have a question, and sure. I get to ask it because I'm. Yes. Uh, so you, you're all over. I mean, you know so many comedians, and you're friends with so many. And I'm just wondering if you have any suggestions for people, or like, who are your favorite comics to see in New York City that people, that like, you rush to get tickets for, and you have well, some I rush underground to get, knowledge. Uh, I rush to get tickets for comics that are rarely in New York, but then yep. I will go to things. Yeah. Uh, well, I Basically, love. Basically, who are some comics that people yeah, yeah. don't necessarily know about? Yes. Uh, oh, who are comics that people don't know about? Ooh, that's a Any good favorite. question. I don't know. Also, who are the ones people? Who are the the comics you love to see? Yeah, let's just broaden it up to just who's a fun person to uh, go to get food with, and they are as follows. Okay. Um, no, John Mulaney is super funny. Kurt Braunohler, Kristen Schaal. Kurt Braunohler is a new show on IFC called Bunk oh, that's geez. really funny. So funny. Um, He's our guest in the show next week. See, see, I told you. Um, <laughs> We just slipped that in there. Okay. You were supposed to do the promo later yeah. on in the show. You just slipped that right I in there. I just very promoted naturally. a thing that's not even mine. Where do I, <laughs> where do I benefit? Get the check. Because I'm a kind person. Um, Michael Che. There's a comic named Michael Che that's really funny. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, I do love him. He's so deadpan. He's great. Yeah, yeah. he's really funny. There's okay. a lot of very funny people. Cool. Next week, then there are a lot of very funny people that are here in the city. You should move here. This is from Sam the Stone. Which do you prefer, Eugene? Live performance, voice acting, or chili cheese fries? I guess live performance. Do you have a thing for chili cheese fries? No. He, so he, if he I was going to really... pick two things that keep me alive or chili cheese fries, I'm going to definitely be like the things that help me live. Yeah. I enjoy more. Live performance, though I do like voice acting, but I think shows, I think doing shows is really fun. Yeah. I, what I really like is the variety. And then, and then I could include chili cheese fries. Right. 
And that's great, you're doing that. I mean, I would say I like poutine more than chili cheese fries. I mean, if you were gonna have to go down that road. Have you been to Mile End? No. Talk about this place in Brooklyn called Mile End. You guys gotta check it out if you're, you know, when you move here to see the funny people that live here. Another tweet is from um, J D D I G. Ask him how it felt to give the commencement speech at Hampshire College, his alma mater, this year. I like that he threw in the exhibition. I know, and I'd be like, Hampshire College, heard of it, sounds familiar. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I went to college <laughs> right. there for four years. Yeah, I knew that it seemed familiar enough um, to give the commencement speech. It was awesome, it was amazing. It's really funny, I it's was, on his website. Yeah, you can go find it. Uh, I was very nervous, because I really, like, because I... It's a big deal. I, and, yeah, and also, like, I gave the one at my high school, but when you give a high school one, it's sort of like, well, you know, you literally were so restrained and what you're about to have is so much better than like what you, like the difference between 12th grade and the first year of college is like a great deal of freedom and trust and responsibility. But the difference between college and now, like you picked a college, like it's more your, your thing that you've wanted to do. So I was sort of very nervous, but I was really excited and it was really great. Part of me wanted to go like, are you sure you don't want me to speak later once I'm like older and have done more or something and can really impart some wisdom? No, I think that I would, that, I'd be love to have you to, as a speaker at a college. That's fantastic. Yeah. That is such a good point, but my school one's like, yeah, you can go to the bathroom. And, yeah. You can go walk around. You're allowed to go on dates. Yeah. Here's a Tumblr question. This is from Rob Koss. When and how did you know comedy was the right profession for you? Um, well, I, Hampshire lets you design your own major, so I actually really loved comedy growing up. And Is that then, why you went there? Yeah, because you could design your own major. So my thesis was a one-hour stand-up act. Oh, that's so cool. And that was my final project. And then before that, I did, you know, things in writing and film and acting and uh, social science and rise of mass culture and wrote, like, a weekly column for a newspaper and, like, radio and just did all this different stuff that I formed into a comedy major. That's uh, so cool. So, yeah, so, so really since I was, like, 18. Yeah. So I was recommend. It this, was it running for student body president when you were like, listen, look at how I flipped this around with this comedy? No, I this, think that. That uh, seems no. like it could be a very inspiring was, event for a high school student who's like not popular and suddenly be like, yeah, this, I'm winning this. I think also people just grew up and also Nirvana became popular. Like it literally went from like, uh, you're a sissy to like, wait a second, it's okay to like weird music. No. Oh. So that's when I was. That's welcome to 1992. Yeah. Everyone. Cool. Uh, another Tumblr question is from Nate Elmkitty. I just or whatever. Next, what's up next for the Eugene Merman Comedy Festival? Oh yeah. We have dates, which I think are around September fifteenth, but no real plan yet. But we're just emailing there about it. There will be. Yeah, they we will. will we will do it. Fabulous. Yeah. Uh, but you do have a show coming up in July in I do in Brooklyn at the yeah at the waterfront uh, in Brooklyn with Kristen Shaw and Bob Goldthwaite and Kurt Braunohler and uh, OK Go and uh, yeah and then some other surprise guests. That's so cool. It's fun. free, right? It's free. Yeah. So come, thousands of people. Yeah. Uh, do we have another tweet or Twitter? Or we're not sure. I could ask. Do we have another tweet. Twitter? We have a tweet. We have so many. You guys sent in a lot. Thank you for doing that. Yeah, yeah. You're very nice of you. Thank you. We have a tweet. Um, go, go, Gowanus. Ooh, so maybe they live here. Would a, um, would a young Eugene Roman or a current aged and Gene Belcher get along? And Eugene's favorite slow burger. Ooh. Um, well, yes. So would you, I yeah. mean, I would totally get along with a child. I mean, I would be like, stop making fart sounds. But I, you know, yeah, I think that, 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 that I would be endeared. Um, and I'd certainly love how like uh, adult and savanti he was at times. <laughs> um, in terms of my I favorite love... burger, I, you know, I have there's like a bunch of burger places that have just opened up, and so I don't really know. But there's one on Seventh Avenue and First Street. Maybe it's called Bear Burger. Oh yeah, it's there's a really bunch of them good. in New York too. Yeah, they I think have like elk few. and all different kinds of different yeah. kind of interesting meats. They that had the vegetarian uh, squirm. Yeah, they're really good. And then the truth is, I haven't. I think that there's there's Bonnie's Grill. There's a bunch, but I don't really know. Yeah. If you had only asked me where some of the fun seafood places were What's to go. What's your favorite seafood place I to don't go? Know. Oh. Brooklyn Fish Camp. That's there it a is. great place. Oh yeah, it is. And, That's a, near me. and Blue Ribbon. You live in Park Slope. I, oh yeah, yeah. Me yeah. too. Yeah, we're probably neighbors. We probably are. Of See you at the Fish Camp. See you at Brooklyn Fish Camp. And right all, after this. <laughs> yep. Sorry we're going to talk to over at the same time. So. That's where we're going to be. So we got to get out of here. Thank you so much for being here. I'm a huge fan. Thank you very much. And thank you guys for watching. Please yeah. don't forget to subscribe. For the love of God, just don't not click subscribe. Eugene, how do you say subscribe in Russian? Make it like sound tough. Subscribe! God, see? Are you, did you do it? Okay, here's some news. 
I won't be here tomorrow because I'm going to LA to do the red carpet at the Young Hollywood Awards. I'm so excited. What's the Young Hollywood Awards? It's like the Oscars for Young Hollywood. <laughs> the winners are already chosen. Like for like kids? Like yeah. you mean like kids or like teens or like, like Ryan teens Gosling? And like tween, teens or like, and like way people younger. that are 20, 20, like early 20s who can play teens. So like, like never Luke, me. Like Luke I like. Perry. Yeah. Would have been one in right in now he's past it, but exactly three. that type of That's person a good example. where you're like, are you yeah, 15, 15 to twenty eight range. Okay, so are you up for something? No, I'm just gonna interview people on the okay. red carpet, and I'm oh, really nice. excited. Yeah, I did that once. Yeah. Uh, for the Webbies, oh, we, yeah. we probably have to go. Anyway, it was fun. Well, we're gonna talk at the fish camp. Um, I yeah. get to chat the, the Young Hollywoods with like people like Aubrey Plaza and James Vanderbeek and I, Carly. And I'm super psyched, and I have questions prepared to bring back to you. While I'm gone, Shannon Coffee from Coffee Chat will host this show. She's so hilarious and so cute. Watch her. Let's leave her a note. Can I have? Can I leave her a note? Isn't James Vanderbeek like 37? Yeah, I know. But now he's but uh, but like, he's so known for Dawson's Creek. It's it's like right, Luke right. Perry. You yeah. know, it's like you're ever you're gonna be known for being a teen. Yeah, yeah. He's always gonna he be welcome a, at the Young Hollywood throw. Awards. When I had my first temp job in Boston, I uh, was an office manager and made made mailboxes for everyone who worked there, and I added one for James Vanderbeek. Wow. Yeah, so that's a thing. And that's, I'm glad we got to that, you guys. Yeah, so, so I, hello James, good luck. I started this picture, this is for Shannon. Do you mind finishing this picture for her while I... What is it? Whatever you want it to be. And then uh, I'm gonna finish this up here. So Grace is hosting the show on Mondays for June. And next week we've got Chris Crocker of Leave Brit Live Britney Alone fame. And comedian Kurt Braunohler, the host of IFC's new game show, Bunk. And on Thursday, Mark Malkoff is going to be here. Oh, uh, we did it. We're going to finish this up, and you guys can see this tomorrow with Shannon Coffee. Lastly, you're my favorite. Good night. Bye. Sorry, well, am I not supposed to show them? Don't show them. Good night. Bye.